last two of those men got out of here a short time ago. Now, police say they went after this victim because of a shirt he was wearing, a shirt they thought might be connected to another biker club. But I talked to the victim today, and he says he has no connection at all to any motorcycle gang. We found two of the bikers right after they got out of jail, and I tried to ask them about this scene in Southside last night. No, get you out of here. I don't give a no, f attack that guy. These are two of four people arrested last night. Gino Fergil, Bradley Lewis, James Mixter II, and Richard Schreiner. Police believe they're members of the War Dogs motorcycle gang and that they attacked a man on East Carson Street. Motorcycles were lined up there last night as Pittsburgh police questioned the bikers. Today we got a copy of their criminal complaints. In them, officers say the men confronted the victim outside Jack's bar because they thought he was wearing a shirt connected to the Pagans Motorcycle Club. According to police, quote, a group of 10 to 20 bikers confronted him about this shirt and began to rip it off. I talked to the victim on the phone today. He didn't want to be identified or go on camera, but did say he is not part of any motorcycle club and his shirt had nothing to do with biker gangs. Investigators say the bikers also noticed the victim had a handgun, so they allegedly stole that too. Police stopped the group a few blocks down Carson. They say many of them had knives and guns. Nothing to say about it? We have nothing to say. That's what I have to say. These two wouldn't answer my questions. Police say they wouldn't talk to investigators either without a lawyer. Now those men are all charged with robbery and simple assault. The victim was not hurt. Reporting live at Pittsburgh City Court, Bob Hazen, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. All right, Bob, thank you. Well, the push is on to make sure your drinking water is safe. City officials now taking action after several problems were uncovered. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Bob Mayo live now with the fix. And Bob, the city now planning to hand out filters to all residents. Yeah, well, the city says that all city residents will be eligible with priority given to a couple of groups. They explained more about how that's going to happen. For Pittsburghers concerned about lead levels in their city drinking water, there's new word on how to get those free water filters and who's on the top of the list for them. We have a million dollar plan to provide uh, free filters to uh, people who need them. So this is the first stage of, of uh, delivering on that promise. Initial top priority goes to residents whose lead service lines are being partially replaced, to households with expectant mothers and kids under six. All other city and Millvale residents can request the filter through the city website or calling 311. Meanwhile, county health officials say the Board of Health will vote in May on universal screening of small children for lead exposure, and the county executive will set up a lead task force. But health director Dr. Karen Hacker sought to ease fears. The conclusions we have taken is that we have never found water to be the primary source of lead poisoning in the children in whom we have investigated these scenarios. County Controller Chelsea Wagner says she will do an expedited audit of how the health department monitors elevated lead blood levels in children. There have been repeated claims, most notably by Mayor Peduto and by Dr. Hacker, referring to what I'm going to say is supposed data. Now, people who are getting work done on their lead service lines will get those filters from contractors. The expectant mothers and uh, families with kids uh, under the uh, age threshold will be getting them through service providers. Again, everyone else can contact the city through the 311 line or through the city website. Reporting live downtown, Bob Mayo, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. All right, let's take an early look at Pittsburgh's action weather, tracking rain moving through. We see some green there. Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey's uh, here with a first look at the forecast. This rain's kind of coming from a weird direction. Am, <laughs> am I wrong about that? You're, well, I don't know if it's weird, but it is coming in from the <laughs> south. We do have low pressure down off the coast, and we have rain kind of coming in from the south southeast and pushing up into the area. As we take a closer look, just some very light rain showers that are moving through right now, heading up towards Pittsburgh. And as we get in a little bit closer, you can see it's really scattered and light. And really talking about some sprinkles or very light rain showers that are moving in. The further south you are, better chance you're going to have for some rain. So if you're heading down to the game tonight against the Cubs, 705 for his pitch. Temperature will be around 58 degrees. You might want to take a light rain jacket just in case, but uh, really not really even going to need it with the few raindrops we're going to have down there. And I don't expect a delay in the game. As we take a look at the next 24 hours, temperatures up into the 60s as we head through the day. We'll have more on when temperatures are going to hit the 80s and how long we're going to stay there. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Did the actor
Officer, discharge the weapon. Negative, that was us. Police dispatch audio breaking down the moments of an officer involved shooting. That scene unfolding early this morning and led to a chaotic chase stretching all the way down Penn Avenue from Wilkinsburg into Point Breeze North. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Marcy Cipriani joins us live now with a confrontation that ended with a wanted man in the hospital. Marcy. Well, yes, yeah, Shannon, we've learned a good bit about that man. Police have identified him as Todd Robinson. They say he is a convicted killer sentenced to 15 to 40 years for a killing back in 1995, where he was convicted of killing a man named Mark Pierce at a bar in Homewood. Police were here at the McDonald's, investigators tell us, to pick him up on a parole violation when they say he rammed the police car and two officers opened fire. The radio transmission you are listening to came from this Wilkinsburg McDonald's seconds after. Investigators say two police officers fired at least three times at 39 year old Todd Robinson, also known as Todd Glover. Police say despite the gunfire, Robinson never stopped. It was like a black, a black Sunday. Uh, he might be on foot uh, going down to Investigators say the officers considered Robinson dangerous. They say they were at the McDonald's attempting to bring him in on a parole violation in a homicide case when detectives say Robinson rammed a police car, they fired, and he fled. Did the actor discharge the weapon? Negative, that was us. Hey, he was trying to run us over, so he took off. Within seconds, just into North Point Breeze, officers found the car wrecked. Nailed down on the ground on the side of Family Dollar. Detectives say Robinson was outside the car hiding and bleeding. They say Robinson had been hit by a bullet. One of the Wilkinsburg officers fired. Mail down on the ground side of Family Dollar. Copy. Police tell us Todd Robinson was taken to a hospital where he underwent surgery for that gunshot wound. He's listed in critical condition, but investigators tell us he is expected to survive. Allegheny County Police are investigating this shooting. Reporting live at McDonald's in Wilkinsburg, Marcy Cipriani, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Three people and more than a dozen animals killed as fire moves through a home in Somerset County. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Ashley Hardaway takes us to that scene in Myersdale, where state police have now identified the victims. You can really see the damage from this side of the house. It appears there used to be a porch here off to the side that is destroyed and state police have called their criminal investigators here to figure out how this started. Three people gone in a matter of minutes. Lou Jean Albright, her son Jimmy Joe Christner and his girlfriend Sarah Marie Butteroff. All three killed when Albright's Maple Valley Road home caught fire around 2.30 this morning. It appears that the, the, the victims were most likely sleeping when this fire took place. The house is just feet away from the Myersdale Summit Township line, an older home. It burned quickly, officials tell us. I, I was told there was almost a dozen dogs that were in the residence, even puppies that didn't survive. Uh, and I, I believe there was a cat, at least one cat at the residence as well. Family members say all of these dogs died. So did some puppies born a couple months ago. Albright's husband tells me off camera he believes the fire was intentionally set, but police cannot say that for sure at this point. Their criminal investigators are looking into it until the cause is figured out. Early on in an investigation where people uh, died because of a result of a fire, we'll use all our resources until we can hone in on exactly uh, what the cause is, whether it's accidental or whether it was intentional. Even though this fire broke out in the middle of the night, state police are asking if anyone knows anything that might assist in their investigation that you call the Somerset Barracks right away. In Myersdale, Somerset County, Ashley Hardway, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. A cache of cannonballs uncovered in Lawrenceville. And starting tomorrow, the work begins to remove them. Police will close a portion of the 39th Street area while the Civil War era cannonballs are safely removed. Late last week, crews placed wood and sandbags over the discovery across from the Arsenal Middle School. Now, that was a precaution to protect against potential explosions. Officers and bomb squad members have been guarding the area to keep the curious away. The removal process is expected to take about five days. President Donald Trump's 100th day in office is this Saturday, and he will be spending that day in Pennsylvania. The commander in chief is making a return trip to the farm show complex in Harrisburg. He was there during the presidential primary back in April. He'll mark his 100th day as president right there. 
President Trump is opting to host a rally Saturday instead of going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, the D.C. tradition where a comedian cracks jokes at the sitting president's expense and the president gives his own stand-up routine. But Mr. Trump decided to boycott that event this year. Presumably, he will tell the crowd at the farm show what he's done in his first 100 days of office. You can sign up to get tickets for that rally through the Trump campaign's website. We've placed a link under the On TV section of our website. The black and gold preparing for the draft, why they may be looking for a quarterback. Plus, Ben Roethlisberger's apology, who number seven is now saying sorry to. And defending the cup, the Pens back on the ice. What the team is saying tonight about their meeting, meeting their longtime rival in round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And we have a few light showers working their way up into Pennsylvania. I'll let you know how long the wet weather will be with us and how long we'll see temperatures in the 80s. I paid for five and a half inches of concrete. Pictures I have here show in places there's only an inch and a half to two and a half inches of concrete. Unfinished work or no work at all. Action News investigates. The local people who say they were ripped off, the answer the owner just gave us. Now, Pittsburgh's Action News 4 with Shannon Perrine, Andrew Stocky, Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey with the four degree guarantee, and Sky 4, everywhere with Action Cam, always live. This is Pittsburgh's Action News 4. All new one for an apology from Ben Roethlisberger to his hometown. The Steelers quarterback now saying he's sorry that he let a few negative words cause a rift between him and Finley, Ohio. Roethlisberger was back in his hometown over the weekend as he and his sister were inducted into Hancock County's Sports Hall of Fame. He says he was hurt several years ago by criticism from some people in town following accusations of sexual assault. You may remember he was not charged then, but he was suspended by the NFL in 2010. That same year, he stopped listing Finley as his hometown. And Shannon, Roethlisberger has committed to playing this season, and that's it. With the draft coming on Thursday, there is some talk that this might be the time for the black and gold to select a quarterback. General Manager Kevin Colbert today on that draft day possibility. Uh, we have a great quarterback. We think, you know, that he's going to be here for for a while. At least we hope that. And, you know, but we got to be prepared. And again, if somebody shows that that we didn't think would be there at a given point, then you have to you have to make sure that you secure that position for the long term. The Steelers also entered this draft not knowing the status of suspended receiver Martavis Bryant. Colbert says the team has not heard from the NFL about Bryant's possible reinstatement. Well, here it is, only the second round, but it may be the best matchup of the entire Stanley Cup playoffs. The Penguins and the Capitals. The rivals were the two best teams in the regular season, and now the winner of this series will be the favorite to win it all. They split the regular season series, each winning all of its games on home ice. But does it matter in the postseason? I, I think uh, regular season is regular season, a playoff is playoff. Uh, uh, it was a few crazy games there, and the good thing, it's always fun to play against the Washington. They, they, they come out hard, and it's always a good matchup for us. So uh, I think we're all looking forward for this series to start. This will be the tenth time these division rivals have met in the playoffs, Pittsburgh winning eight of the previous nine. This time, the Capitals will host games one and two and enter with home ice advantage. It's not like we're building a game plan for the road and a different game plan for at home. You know, we're trying to play the same game regardless of where the rink is. And, and I think that's the biggest takeaway and that's the biggest message. And not only is there history and hard feelings, there is talent on both sides. Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Alexander Ovechkin, a combined six MVP awards and five scoring titles. Look at it from a fan perspective, I think they're you know, probably two teams that are pretty exciting to watch that like to create offense, don't necessarily sit back. I think both of us take pride in playing defensively, but um, you know, there's some guys on both sides who can create offensively. And and with that, a look at the second round schedule. The series opens in Washington Thursday night at 7.30. Game 2 Saturday, also in D.C. Then the teams come here to Pittsburgh for Game 3 next Monday, May 1st, and Wednesday, May 3rd. If necessary, Game 5 will be Saturday, May 6th, back in Washington. So two days off between Games 4 and 5. Game 6 will be back in Pittsburgh on Monday, May 8th. And Game 7, if needed, in Washington Wednesday, May 10th.
Sydney Crosby says they're exciting teams to watch. I have my blood pressure medicine, and my, <laughs> everything I need. My goodness, exciting is a, is a different word for it, but it, yeah, it is. It's, it's going to be great hockey. It should be a lot of fun, and for these sure. two teams obviously don't get along, so that'll make it even more interesting. For sure, and I know you're excited too. For yeah, this next yes, match. I am. A little bit. It would have been nicer though if they met a little bit later down the road. Yes. I still yes. don't know how that <laughs> happened, but we don't need to talk about that right now. Let's talk about the temperatures outside. We made it up to the around 63 degrees this afternoon, but the rain came through. You can see the rain drops on the screen right now we've dropped down a little bit to 59 degrees currently winds out of the east at 16 miles per hour temperature wise the further you go away from the rain the warmer it gets 68 in Youngstown 66 in Franklin Akron at 70 right now and as you head down towards Deep Creek 46 Morgantown 57 and right now 52 in Washington we have this big area low pressure just off the coast and it's pumping up all this moisture into Pennsylvania not much is making it into western Pennsylvania uh, we've had a less or a trace of rain so far officially at the airport not expecting too much more just some light scattered showers or sprinkles in the area as this moves up but it has uh, really brought the uh, clouds in later this uh, afternoon this morning we had some nice sunshine especially from Pittsburgh up to the north and you can see it's just very light rain that is moving into the region now as we head into tomorrow that low is going to continue to push up towards the uh, north so we'll still have a chance of a few sprinkles or a few light scattered showers as we go through the day on Tuesday, but Wednesday will be kind of in between systems. We'll slip in a little bit of high pressure and that should clear it out. So for the second half of Wednesday, we will be looking at some sunshine that will be returning. So on future cash, you can see a little closer here. 7 a.m. in the morning could have a few sprinkles, especially southeast of Pittsburgh as we go through the day. This is one o'clock on Tuesday. Here it is at six, but most locations will be staying dry. And then we go into Wednesday morning in the morning. We'll have the clouds around, but as we go through the day, you see how it will get very nice as we head towards Wednesday later in the day, and then we take it into Thursday and also looking in pretty good shape. And both of those days, it is going to be very warm out there. Now tomorrow we're looking at 50 degrees to start the day, so definitely on the mild side in the morning. By noontime, we're up to 60 with maybe a couple spotty showers around, and then we take it into the evening hours, a high of 68 degrees winds east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So as we go through tomorrow, 68 degrees, but look at what happens as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. We'll start with the clouds on Wednesday. Day. The sunshine will come out 80 degrees. Then we take it into Thursday, 84 degrees for your high temperature. Cold front coming through late, so that could bring us some showers late on Thursday and through the day on Friday. And we drop that temperature down to 74 degrees and down even cooler as we head down into the weekend on Saturday. Chance of rain on both Saturday as well as Sunday. Your four degree guarantee for tomorrow. A high temperature of 68 degrees. Getting warm. Thanks, Mike. Well, she was just reading a book when she says her Fitbit exploded. One woman's warning to all users tonight. And your favorite chocolate bar may be changing. The big thing's Hershey now has a store to cut out the calories. This is Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Well, the numbers tell the story. Gas prices in Pittsburgh are on the way up. Man, have we noticed. And they are rising quickly as the summer driving season approaches. Nationally, prices are up about a penny, but here in Pittsburgh, prices are up by more than a nickel a gallon. Right now, drivers are quick to notice the changes at the pump and in their pocketbook. Instead of putting like fill it, I always just get enough because I have to run all the time. It is a roller coaster. It goes up and down. I remember when it was 4.30, 4, almost 4.50 a gallon for regular. I'm asking everybody, when is it going to stop? I can't afford all this gas. I used to get fill my car up with $20. Now I got to go 50. I know, right? So still, we are paying less than last year at this time when gas prices rose 41 cents before Memorial Day. Okay, a warning tonight for Fitbit users after a user says hers exploded while she was wearing it. Dina Mitchell says she had her Fitbit flex for only two weeks when it exploded, burning her arm with melting plastic. She says she was reading a book and there was no indication anything was wrong with the device. If they are exploding or if there's some type of malfunction with them. I mean, I'm going to have a scar from this probably. Can you imagine what it would do to a child? Scary. The device does come with a warning saying it contains electrical equipment that could cause injury if not properly handled. Fitbit is aware of the incident and is investigating tonight. The company says the device should not explode under normal use. I mean, he took my check, he cashed it, and he never did anything. 
unfinished work or no work at all. The complaints pouring in against a local company. But tonight, Action News investigates why the owner's family says he is the real victim. County, can you have her, the, the four-year-old, open the door? A four-year-old calls 911, her mother lying passed out on the floor, what police also found nearby when they got inside. This is Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Addressing the allegations against him during a board meeting. This Penn Hill School Board member is under fire and now he's resigning from his job. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Sheldon Ingram live tonight with the charges that he is now facing. Sheldon. Yes, all of the charges are listed in a criminal complaint that we show you in just a few seconds. In the meantime, Penn Hill's residents, they react with a lot of disappointment. Allegheny County Sheriff's deputies arrested and charged Penn Hill School Board member Donald Kuhn with three counts of heroin possession. He was taken from Linton Middle School in March. The criminal complaint says deputies confiscated three stamped bags of alleged heroin called fire. They also found an opioid concealed in an Altoid breathment case and a cut straw allegedly containing cocaine residue. Penn Hill's residents react strongly to Coon's charges. You, as a representative of Penn Hill's, have to hold yourself a little higher. Donnie's a dear friend of mine, the family's a dear friend of mine. Unfortunately, things happen. Bad example for the students? Bad example. Very bad example. And uh, hopefully this don't keep happening. How much more can, can Penn Hill's take? The school, the money for the school being taken, now drugs. It is another layer of disappointing news. Plus. You know, they had the superintendent uh, with this uh, money thing, the money issue, and it's just more and more stuff. It just keeps coming up. Kuhn addressed the incident last month at a school board meeting. Unfortunately, it is election time, and all too often, those who have no knowledge or plan and have no record of their own to run on, they attempt to create a political smokescreen. Again, that was Kuhn at last month's school board meeting. He is not in police custody. And in the meantime, there is another school board meeting scheduled for this evening. Reporting live from Penn Hills, Sheldon Ingram, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. All right, Sheldon, thank you. Well, he was convicted in the ambush of two state troopers, and now he is refusing to communicate. Lawyers for Eric Freen are requesting an emergency competency hearing after jail officers told them Freen would not walk or talk, was staring off into space and had to be brought over in a wheelchair. But the judge denied that request. Right now, jurors are hearing testimony in the sentencing phase as prosecutors are seeking the death penalty here. The same jury found Freen guilty on all charges last week in the death of Corporal Brian Dixon and the shooting of Alex Douglas. Freen has been placed on suicide watch at the jail. A four-year-old female is on the line saying she can't wake up her mother. There's history of overdoses. A four-year-old child calling 911 after her caregiver overdoses right in front of her. It all happened in Ambridge, Beaver County, right on 18th Street. Allison Welling revived with Narcan after she was found unconscious, police say. They say they also found drugs and a hypodermic needle nearby. The United States now issuing sanctions against Syria. The Trump administration issued the 271 sanctions in response to President Bashar al-Assad's alleged use of chemical weapons. 80 people were killed earlier this month after the chemical weapons were dropped in northern Syria, where rebels currently have control. You'll remember the U.S. also fired airstrikes following the attack. The sanctions are among one of the largest in U.S. history. Money was the motive, at least that's what prosecutors say about 18-year-old Michael Ron Kadar, who is accused of making thousands of threats to Jewish centers worldwide, including in Philadelphia. Prosecutors say the suspect ran a sophisticated online threat network, earning $240,000 to make those threats. His parents were also inside the Tel Aviv courtroom in Israel, and they blamed their son's behavior on severe medical problems, including a brain tumor. Now back here at home, a worker pinned, all while working on a pool in the 11,000 block of Waterford Street in North Huntington, Westmoreland County. Crews were able to pull the man out. He was taken to the hospital, and we understand he is expected to survive. 
Andrew, a tractor trailer goes up in flames, mail spilling all over the road. All of this causing a rough morning commute on the PA Turnpike. Let's go to Sky 4 here with Action Cam over that tractor trailer that overturned right around mile marker 36. That is very close to Butler Valley, that exchange there. So there were so many people and drivers stuck in this. The lanes finally reopened on the turnpike right around 9 o'clock this morning. We do know the good news here. No one hurt. And another crash, this one happening in Pittsburgh's Elliott neighborhood, sending two people to the hospital. Tonight we know they are both in critical condition. All this happening just before 6 this morning in the 100 block of Chartiers Avenue. Pittsburgh police say the car crashed into the pole, trapping one of the victims inside. Medics took them to the hospital. Police in Washington County stepping up the search to find a missing man. 63-year-old Milo Briggs Jr. was last seen Thursday. His van is also missing, so it is a 2002 green Chevy van. It has this license plate from Pennsylvania, JFJ5672. So if you see Milo or if you see that green van, call police right away. All right, Shannon, nearly $29 billion. That's what Pittsburgh-based PPG Industries is offering to pay in its third attempt to take over a Dutch chemical company. ASCO Nobel has previously rejected PPG's offers of $22 and $24 billion. Now the cash and stock deal has been up to $28.8 billion. ASCO Nobel makes industrial paints and chemicals. PPG says it will not relocate any of the company's European production plants to the United States. That's if the deal goes through. Think about this. Six years. That's how long some customers in Conconessing Township, Butler County, have been living without clean drinking water. And today, a Pittsburgh group donated $5,000 to help get water to some of those families. Now, the money will be enough to supply 50 families with clean water. Some of the members of the group do live in the city of Pittsburgh and are no strangers to water problems. The fact that dozens of families can go six and more years without access to clean drinking water and that they have to go to a church basement to get water to cook their food is absolutely unacceptable and it frankly ought to be a headline in every newspaper and the front story in every in every nightly news. Ms. Kramer, along with several others in Pittsburgh and in Butler, are organizing Climate March, a climate march to try to bring more light to the growing issue of unclean water left by fracking and other problems. It's so easy for somebody to steal from somebody else and, and basically get away with it. A local company under fire. Customers claiming he either didn't do the work or didn't finish it. What the owner tells Action News investigates about the dozens of complaints. Well, they are symbols of history, but tonight they've been removed. Why the city says more will be taken down and we'll tell you where this happened. And we're tracking rain showers moving into the area. How long the wet weather will be with us and when we're going to be seeing temperatures skyrocketing into the 80s. This is Pittsburgh's Action News 4. He is accused of kidnapping his former student, sparking a nationwide search. Now Tennessee teacher Tad Cummings is facing a judge. Cummings was arrested last week after being found in a remote cabin in California with 15-year-old Elizabeth Thomas. Cummings faces both federal and state felony charges of kidnapping and sexual contact. And if convicted, he's facing at least 10 years in prison. All well, prominent symbols of the Confederacy here in the U.S. are now gone. Workers in New Orleans removed the Liberty Place Monument while a large crowd watched. ABC's Emily Rao now with why the city says more monuments will come down. Wearing masks and bulletproof vests, city crews in New Orleans worked to remove the Battle of Liberty Place Monument. Our history is not a game of Jenga. The 35-foot granite obelisk, a tribute to whites who revolted against the racial integration of the city's police department, but to others, it's a symbol of hate. The there was no vote. You voted if there was a vote, if there was a vote, they wouldn't be taking it down right? in the middle you of the night. The politicians in office. You voted for this. them. They spoke. They made their decision. Welcome to democracy. It's coming down. Impassioned supporters of the removal sparring with opponents who say taking down the monument is erasing history. We will no longer allow the Confederacy to literally be put on a pedestal in the heart 
of our city. The mayor making it clear where he stands on the issue, but some supporters still not happy with how it's playing out. We are very happy to see this hated statue be taken down, but we are disappointed in the mayor that uh, it's being done in the middle of the night where people can't come out and celebrate. The mayor blames the timing on death threats from protesters, saying the crews will continue their work to remove other monuments at night to keep the process as safe as possible. This is the first of four monuments slated for removal. The mayor won't give any details on when that will happen, citing those extreme threats and security concerns. In New York, Emily Rao, ABC News. You are going to want to check your snack supply. The new recall on potato chips, how they could make you sick. And complaint after complaint, yards torn up. Some saying the work was never completed. Others claiming the company never did anything but took their money. Now what the owner has to say about it. And finding a forever home, the final stop on the road to recovery for an abandoned dog. Now, Action News investigates. Concrete complaints. Customers saying they aren't happy with the work. Others saying the work they paid for was never even done. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Alyssa Raymond went to find answers. And Alyssa, you actually talked to the owner himself. Shannon, I did. And he said that he wanted to share his side of the story. These problems poured in about this local masonry business. The complaints range from sloppy work to no work at all, even though some of that work was already paid for. People are sharing their experiences with Pittsburgh's Action News 4 because they don't want this to happen to anyone else. But I was so stupid. And I, I didn't think I, it was a good price. The more I went, the more I find, find out wrong with the concrete and with the wall. So it's Michael Sneer and uh, Richard Barone that, uh, that did this to us here in this neighborhood. I do owe people money, but I would, you know, it's not like I took their money and ran. I actually did their jobs. James Siebert hired Barone Masonry in April 2015. Rick Barone and his employees completed the work, but Siebert wasn't happy with it. I paid for five and a half inches of concrete. Pictures I have here show in places there's only an inch and a half to two and a half inches of concrete. Before Sieber discovered the now documented defects, his neighbors, David Bauer and Dorothy Combe, made down payments for work on their driveways. Bauer and Combe wrote checks out to Michael Sneer, who was employed by Barone Masonry at the time. I mean, he took my check, he cashed it, and he never did anything. Sneer did start the work on Combe's driveway and steps. No, he did not finish the work. Uh -uh, not at all. It was torn up all summer. I didn't think it would be so easy for somebody to steal from somebody else. And, and basically get away with it. Just do something to him so that he doesn't do this to anyone else. We attempted to talk to Sneer. He declined an on-camera interview. Barone told us he fired Sneer. But over the phone, Sneer said he quit working for his ex-brother-in-law's business. Barone says he started his business over back in December. I never had not one complaint since it's just me and my father. Over the past three years, the Better Business Bureau received 14 complaints throughout the Pittsburgh area about Barone Masonry. Consumers alleged making multiple attempts to contact him and do not receive any uh, feedback from him, do not receive their deposit back either. The business had an F rating when Pittsburgh's Action News 4 started investigating. Since we spoke to Barone, he responded to all those complaints and is currently not rated. Michael Wright says he just wants his $2,000 deposit back. I'll never collect that money. He says Barone has thrown him every excuse in the book. His name needs to get out there. Barone's family believes he's the real victim here. He's a good, honest kid. And there's a lot of people that owe him money. And he's trying to take care of his family, but there's people stiffing him. And Court documents reveal judgments against Sneer and Barone, totaling more than $10,000. And Siebert sued Barone for thousands more. Court records show Barone agreed to pay $500 a week, but Siebert says Barone didn't live up to his end of the bargain. And then on March 26, Barone filed Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Barone says he owes about $10,000. It might take me, you know, couple months, but I plan on paying everybody everybody back. I owe. Siebert says in a way he feels bad for Barone, but in the end, Siebert believes it's Barone's business, so it's also his responsibility. My agreement was not with me and his foreman, Mike. My agreement was with Richard Barone, and he was in charge of that stuff. And if he doesn't want to stay around and watch what his business is going on, then hey, he's got to pay the piper at the end. 
And Barone told us he plans on doing just that. I apologize and I hope this doesn't ruin my rep. I know my reputation's ruined, but I'm going to fix it, so I'm sorry. And at last check, Barone still owed Siebert about $6,000, and he owed Wright his $2,000 deposit. As for Sneer, he's charged with home improvement fraud, deceptive business practices, and theft. Sneer is scheduled to be in court on those charges next month. Alyssa Raymond, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Time for Pittsburgh's Action Weather now. we got Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey joining us now. And so, I mean, if I know you like spring, and I like spring. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful weekend, but it's turning into summer. Really quick, yeah. yeah. We're going to see temperatures well into the 80s as we go wow. through the next couple of days. Yeah, it's going to take right off. Let's take a look at it now. Not near 80 today. We are seeing some showers which are moving through. And actually, the further south you go today, the cooler the temperatures get. That's a bit unusual. Right now, 57 degrees in Morgantown, 57 in West Mifflin, a little warmer up in Newcastle at 61, Youngstown 68, and Franklin at 66 degrees. A couple of raindrops right now on the camera looking into a downtown Pittsburgh where we have a temperature of 59 degrees. Winds east at 16 miles per hour. As we take a look at the high temperature from earlier today, 64. So pretty close to that average of 65 and 45 for your low. Pretty close to the average of 43 degrees. So as we take a look at the uh, clouds uh, from Cranberry. Now this is looking out towards the west. You can see became overcast in the afternoon in the morning. There's plenty of sunshine up in Cranberry, but that all went away and it will be uh, overcast as we head through tonight and into tomorrow morning. And here is why there's actually low pressure, which is south of Norfolk. All of that is pushing moisture and clouds up into Pennsylvania. Not seeing a lot in the way of rain, just some sprinkles or light rain showers that are moving into western PA at this time. But it is extending up towards uh, Butler County through Beaver County, heading up towards Lawrence County. So you could see a few raindrops even up as, as far as those locations. And you can see it's very sporadic and again, very light that is moving into the region. Now, as we go into tomorrow, that low is going to move right up the coast. And that's still going to give us a chance of seeing a few light rain showers, especially from Pittsburgh down to the southeast. But again, not much in the way of rain accumulation. That low will continue to move off. And as we head into the day on Wednesday, we'll start with some clouds. But you see some high pressure fills in, and that should clear us out. So we should finish Wednesday with some sunshine and some very warm temperatures. And those warm temperatures will stick around through Thursday. So here we go into tomorrow. This is Tuesday at 7 a.m. Mostly cloudy skies as we head through the day. 1 o'clock, some showers, very light east of Pittsburgh and south of Pittsburgh. That's also the case at 6 p.m. As we take it into Wednesday, you can see the clouds that uh, will be with us. Those will move away as that low pressure moves up to the north and high pressure fills in. So Wednesday, we will finish with mostly sunny skies and warm temperatures. On Thursday, we'll start the day at least the first half with mostly sunny skies before clouds fill in. We'll have a chance of some showers late on Thursday. Overnight, 56 degrees, mostly cloudy with maybe a couple of showers. 50 degrees tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy. East wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. A high temperature on Tuesday of 68 degrees, mostly cloudy, and we'll only have a few spotty showers around town. As we take a look at Wednesday and Thursday, though, look at these high temperatures. 80 on Wednesday. That's the day we'll have clouds in the morning. It will become mostly sunny. 84 on Thursday. That'll kind of be the opposite. We'll have sunshine through the first Half of the day till noon, and then as we go into the late afternoon, clouds will arrive, and then Thursday night we'll have some showers which will move in. Those rain showers will be with us into Friday with a cold front, and that will drop our high temperature down to 74 on Friday. We're back up to 78 on Saturday and 82 on Sunday. Both days a chance of rain. Your four degree guarantee for tomorrow, 68 degrees. Thank you. For your money now, Hershey is cutting calories. Today, the company announced that by the end of 2022, half of its individually wrapped standard and king size sweets will have 200 calories or fewer. They plan to reformulate treats, introduce new ones, and adjust the sizes. King sized bars will be designed so they can be more easily shared or saved for later. Right now, a standard Hershey bar is 210 calories. Hershey also plans to put an easy to read calorie label on the front of all standard and king size bar by the end of next year. Shannon, another recall to tell you about tonight. Frito Lay is recalling two of its potato chip products over fears of salmonella. It's a voluntary recall for jalapeno flavored Lay's kettle cooked potato chips. Also taken off the shelves, jalapeno flavored Miss Vicky's kettle cooked chips. Frito Lay says the seasoning blend for the chips has potentially tainted jalapeno powder. 
Well, some are just not loving it. The new McDonald's uniform, that is. The fast food chain releasing the new uniforms this month for its employees, but some turn to social media, slamming them for their lack of color. Some saying they look like something out of the Hunger Games. <laughs> McDonald's says the goal is comfort and contemporary professionalism. More than 70% of restaurant empl employees surveyed say they like the new uniforms. They are meant to protect student loan borrowers, but those guidelines are being rolled back. Tonight, attorney generals from 20 states, including Pennsylvania and the District of Columbia, are faulting Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. The letter sent today called on DeVos to restore the memos which, started, which were started by the Federal Education Department last year under President Barack Obama. The memos help borrowers get information about their loans and repayment options. Okay, you want to talk about a long distance call. Yeah, this is really interesting. The out of this world record that deserved a congratulatory call from the president himself. I'm Mike Clark and new at six on Pittsburgh's Action News for bikers behaving badly. And only we are there as two members of a motorcycle club are released from jail. Maybe we could ask you about oh, what happened. No, get you out of here. I don't give a no, that guy. Get the the attack outside of a popular South Side bar. We're live with how a t-shirt allegedly sparked the violent moments. This week, David Muir across America, Trump's first 100 days. Now the people speak. The swing states, the swing counties, the voters, their report card for President Trump, the support, the anger. World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. And tonight in prime time here on WTAE Channel 4, it begins at 8 with Dancing with the Stars. Then at 10, Quantico. And keep it right here for Pittsburgh's Action News 4 at 11. It is a stunning new glimpse of Earth through the rings of Saturn. These pictures just released from NASA showing Earth as just a point of light through the icy ring. So in this photo, Earth is 870 million miles away. Just let that wash over you. And for what it's worth, this is the Earth's southern Atlantic Ocean facing the camera right here. Uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Take it out clearly. How about an out of this world record to tell you about tonight? A world record. Astronaut Peggy Whitson, commander of the International Space Station, has broken the U.S. record for the most time spent in space. That's right. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Sally Kidd with the long-distance congratulatory call. Commander Whitson now holds the record for the most accumulated time in space by an American. She has spent 534 days in space so far and will not be returning to Earth for a few more months. Whitson received a phone call from President Trump, who, along with daughter Ivanka and astronaut Kate Rubens, congratulated her on the milestone. Whitson says this is an exciting time for NASA as the space agency prepares for human expeditions to Mars. Getting there will require some international cooperation to get the, the, it to be a planet-wide uh, approach in order to make it successful. We want to try and do it during my first term or at worst during my second term, so we'll have to speed that up a little bit. NASA is building a mega rocket to launch astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft into deep space in the 2020s to, in part, explore an asteroid with the goal of reaching low Mars orbit in the 2030s. And Commander Whitson is also the first woman to command the space station twice. And at 57, she is the oldest woman in space. Reporting from Washington, I'm Sally Kidd. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 starts right now. No, get out of here. Maybe we could ask you about no, what happened. Go, get you out, out of here. I don't give a no, that guy. Get the out of here. Bikers behaving badly. An attack outside of a popular South Side bar landing four men behind bars. Well, here they are, members of the War Dogs, a local motorcycle club. And only on four, two of them having strong words for Pittsburgh's Action News 4's Bob Hazen as they left jail. He joins us now live at Bob. This allegedly happened, what, all over a T-shirt with a number on it? And yeah, Janelle, police say that number 16 can be a symbol for a different motorcycle club. Apparently, these men didn't these men didn't like that motorcycle club, but the victim tells me he has no associations whatsoever with any biker clubs. These men were still putting themselves back together after getting out of jail when I tried to ask about what police say they and their fellow biker club members did last night. Nothing to say about it? We have nothing to say. Get the That's what I have to say. 
They're two of the four men arrested for allegedly stealing a man's shirt and gun in Southside. In a criminal complaint, investigators say the men appear to be part of the War Dogs Biker Club, and they were, quote, wearing War Dogs colors, simply covered up by black pullover sweatshirts in an evident attempt to conceal their affiliation. When a group of 10 to 20 of the bikers saw a man outside Jack's bar, they allegedly confronted him because he was wearing a shirt with the number 16 on it, which police say can be affiliated with another biker group, the Pagans. The victim did not want to go on camera or be identified, but told me over the phone he has no connection to any motorcycle gang or club and didn't think his shirt did either. Even so, police say the War Dogs members ripped the victim's shirt off and stole a gun he had in a holster. They were pulled over by officers a few blocks down Carson. Get out of here. And they were going to ask you about. Go. Did Get you out of here. Detectives say the bikers would not answer their questions either, but did otherwise cooperate, including several of them letting officers know that they had guns and knives. Those suspects are all facing charges for robbery and simple assault. The victim was not hurt. Reporting live at Pittsburgh City Court, Bob Hazen, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Uh, thank you. Happening now, lead backlash. Pittsburgh Mayor Bill Peduto making your family's safety a top priority following repeated concerns over the quality of water in city homes. And Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Bob Mayo with the filters available for anyone living in the city and who sits at the top of the list. Columbus today on a number of fronts on the lead and water issue. Topping those stories is the information about who will be getting the water filters and how soon in the city of Pittsburgh. Initial top priority for the city's free filters goes to residents whose lead service lines are being partially replaced. Households with expectant mothers and kids under six. All other city and Millvale residents can request the filter through the city website or calling 311. We'll be providing the uh, filters directly to homeowners when the, when the work is being done. The contractors will just sort of leave, leave them on the doorstep. When it comes to the families, we're working with um, health services organizations. Meanwhile, County Controller Chelsea Wagner says she'll do an expedited audit of how the health department monitors lead blood levels in kids. She criticized the mayor and health department for what she called a concerted effort to tell the public not to worry. Our lead water crisis is just that, a crisis. We can't delay another day for the sake of all Pittsburghers, but especially for Pittsburgh children. The Board of Health will vote in May on universal screening of small children for lead exposure, and the county executive will set up a lead task force. Health Director Dr. Karen Hacker sought to ease fears. We've been seeing a downward trend in the number of children who have uh, actually what we consider to be lead toxicity. But I have not seen and have looked for water as the source, um, but it has not been there, at least in the reports that I've read of the children with elevated lead levels. Again, names are being taken now for getting those water filters. The actual distribution is a couple of weeks out. Downtown Bob Mayo, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. To Pittsburgh's Action Weather now and showers. Some of your windows right now may be open. You might as well close them. That's right. Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey joins us with a first look at that. Radar, getting a little active out there. A little bit. Some yeah. light rain that's moving into the area, moving from the south to the north, and will continue to push up into the region, but really going to be some light rain, if not just some sprinkles, that will be moving into the region. Let's take a look at what's happening out there right now. Just some light rain that's moving through Pittsburgh, and as we get a little bit closer, you can see it's uh, moving all the way up towards Butler, Catanning, uh, Cranberry, uh, up towards uh, Zelianople, and everybody just about seeing some uh, sprinkles that are moving into the area. As we take a look at the next 24 hours, we will have a chance of a couple spotty showers tomorrow, but for the most part, we're looking at cloudy skies and we will have temperatures that will be reaching into the upper 60s. Then our temperatures are going to jump up into the 80s. I'll tell you for how long. That's coming up in just a few minutes. A man found hiding, bleeding from a gunshot wound, the bullet coming from a police officer's gun. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Marcy Cipriani live tonight with a confrontation that quickly turned violent here. And Marcy, you've learned that this was all over a parole violation? It was, Janelle. This was a parole violation from a homicide case. Police say two Wilkinsburg police officers actually pulled up here to this Wilkinsburg McDonald's and spotted Todd Robinson 
early this morning. They knew he was wanted, so investigators say they tried to take him into custody when police say Robinson became violent. Investigators say the officers approached Todd Robinson by walking to his car outside the McDonald's. That's when police say Robinson quickly tried to get away, backing into one of the police cars twice, and both of the officers fired their guns. Detectives say Robinson was hit, but continued to flee before wrecking into a pole in North Point Breeze, where he was taken into custody. Listen as it all plays out. Hey, we had shots fired at McDonald's. Subject ran the car, took off into the city. Uh, he crashed off, and he's now uh, on foot. On foot. Where's the MVAC at, Sarge? The pen and Did the actor discharge the weapon? Negative. That was us. Uh, he was trying to run us over, so he took off. County nails down on the ground on the side of Family Dollar. Police say Todd Robinson was taken to the hospital. He suffered a gunshot wound and was in surgery. Investigators tell us he was listed in critical condition but is expected to survive. Allegheny County Police are investigating the shooting. They want to hear from anyone who was in this area right around 530 this morning. Reporting live in Wilkinsburg, Marcy Cipriani, Pittsburgh's Action News 4. Thank you, Marcy. Three people and more than a dozen animals killed in an early morning fire. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Ashley Hardway in Meyerdale, Somerset County, with the flames leaving a small community grieving their loved ones' deaths and looking for answers. Investigators tell us not only did three people die inside this home when it caught fire overnight, but around a dozen animals died as well. And state police are still trying to figure out how this started. The house gutted by fire. When the smoke cleared, investigators would learn that Lou Jean Albright, her son Jimmy Joe Christner, and his girlfriend Sarah Marie Borderoff had died. Around one dozen dogs and a cat also died. Flames broke out around 2.30 a.m. just over the Myersdale border. Criminal investigators were called out to help figure out how this started. Whenever somebody dies and it's early on where we don't have enough information, we'll throw all our resources at it when it comes to the fire marshals, our criminal service, our, our evidence team that gathers evidence. Some family members believe this fire